I welcome you for this course on earthquake geotechnical engineering and we are discussing the module 3 of this course which is on ground response analysis, soil strand interaction and local site effects. So, within the GRA and local site effect today we are going to talk about soil structure interaction which is one of the you know this uh, important area which falls under the geotechnical engineering as well as structural engineering. So, we are basically under module 3 which is on GRA and local site effect. In the first chapter we already covered ground response analysis using 1D GRA and 2D GRA we, where we uh, have 4 lectures. Today, in the second chapter of this module, we are going to talk about soil strand interaction and we will have two lectures on this SSI about this and finally, we will cover local site effects. So, today let us uh, do for SSI soil strand interaction that is the part chapter 2 and what we are going to talk is the list in the two lectures on SSI what is going to be covered in this chapters are listed here and the uh, first 5 points we will be discussing this lecture and the next two points we will discuss in the next lecture. So, today we are going to talk about objective of soil interaction SSI, effects of SSI that is kinematic and inertial interaction. Then we are also going to talk about overall effects of dynamic SSI or seismic SSI, major issues and methods of analysis and directions of structure methods. So, these will be today we are going to talk. Now, let us have here. Uh, uh, what, uh, what is the basic objective of the SSI soil uh, structure interaction? The basic principle of dynamic soil structure interaction can be explained, uh, which is like uh, uh, there is a uh, book, first book on SSI by John P. Wolf, published in 1985 with the title Dynamic Soil structure Interaction, and which is in frequency domain and the in time domain version came in 1988 of the same authors. So, accordingly and otherwise also basically you know that the problem with the soil, soil is not a finite medium, it is a semi infinite medium as we discussed during the wave propagation. And major problem in dynamic SSI or uh, let us say uh, uh, seismic SSI is the modeling of unbounded soil domain. For any, any analysis you cannot consider the infinite domain particularly when you are dealing with the finite element methods. Uh, uh, so, you need to model this unbounded soil domain. So, that is the uh, first and fundamental objective of the SSR how we model the unbounded domain. Norm for dynamic loading a structure which could be a foundation or superstructure, it will always interact with the surrounding soil and it is not adequate to analyze the structure independently. If seismic loading is applied to the soil region around the structure, then one has to model this region along with the structure. So, in the case of static loading what we can do? We can consider a fixious boundary which can be included at a sufficient distance from the structure where one can uh, uh, expect that the response will diminish from a practical point of view. However, for dynamic loading this procedure cannot be used. Why it is can be explained in this slide? You have a structure which may be here, a structure and foundation are taken together. It may be subjected to external dynamic loading, which may be due to wind load, or it may be due to subject subjected to seismic loading, or a combination of these. So basically, when it is subjected to some dynamic load, the structure, then the wave, it will uh, like create some waves which will pass through the soil, and these waves will go to infinity and will not come back. But if you put a fixed boundary as the case here, in that case the waves will reflect back to the structure uh, this dotted line shown here that is showing that this is the reflection occurring which is not actual in the actual scenario and in that case because you this is fixed boundary which is in, in fact there is no boundary but you are putting for uh, analysis. So, as a result this is we need to deal with this fixed boundary. So, what the fixed boundary would reflect waves originating from the vibrating structure back onto the region and so this is not permissible. So, what is required in soil interaction? We need to model this fixed boundary and this modeling is the primary objective of the SSI. 
So, what is done here? What is the when we model this fixes boundary? What is the requirement that this fixes boundary should absorb all incoming waves and it should not reflect back which the waves which st strike this boundary back to the structure. So, that is the basic fundamental concept. So, uh, as we discussed, should we model in such a way that it satisfies what we call the radiation conditions. So, the condition where we say is that all incoming waves will be absorbed by this boundary that is basically radiation condition. So, uh, this boundary should represent what we call an energy sink where only outgoing waves can occur and this boundary should be modeled adequately. So, the modeling of this boundary is very important in any soil acid interaction analysis and this is one of the major challenge that how to model this boundary. So, as a result the fundamental objective of the analysis of SSI and dynamic response of the structure as well as soil is to be calculated taking into account the radiation of energy of the waves propagating into the soil region which is not included in the model. What happens? Like when you put the fixes boundary actually as a result you cut down the remaining parts uh, because if for the soil stratum it is going to infinity in the horizontal direction as well as in the uh, vertically downward direction. But once you put the fixes boundary then you are cutting the region. So, first of all this boundary which you are putting should satisfy the radiation condition and it should simulate your the missed part of the soil. So, th that is the basically. So, analysis the dynamic response of the structure as well as soil is to be calculated taking into account the radiation of energy of the waves which propagate into the soil region which is not included in the model. So, that is that is the fundamental objective and there are different types of boundaries which we will discuss in the next lecture on the SSI the how to deal with the boundary. Now, before that what are the effect of SSI? What is the case when we I consider soil acid interaction? I do not consider and where it is required. So, that we we the salient features it can be explained by comparing the dynamic response of a structure which is founded on rock or an identical structure which is embedded in the soil. So, you have two structures both structures are identical one is founded on rock and another is uh, embedded inside the soil. So, figure in the next shows two identical structures which are with ridge base one sitting on rock while other embedded in soft soil. So, you have here two identical structures are there structures are identical, but at the base one is lying on the rock the first one. The second one there is a soil column between bedrock and the base of the structure. Let us say that both the structures are subjected to same seismic excitation. So, you will see that response of these two structures even the structures are identical will be very different when in the second case. So, in the first case when the structure is situated on the rock then the waves coming from the seismic source there will be not much change. This is sim similar to what we have discussed in ground response analysis. So, that is why this uh, the first step of any SSI solution interaction analysis is basically ground response analysis. So, the ground response analysis we have discussed that when the waves travel through the rock there is not much change in their amplitude or their characteristics. But when these waves passes through the soil particularly through the loose soil then there is a change in their characteristics and most of the time these waves get amplified at most of the frequencies. So, this, this is the case here two cases. Now, what is the effect here? So, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, here both are identical the, these things we already discussed a horizontal motion is considered here vertically propagating horizontal motion is considered with control point at the free surface. First the seismic input motion acting on the structure so will change. So, it is here let, let, uh, let me explain with the slide. So, what is done here you have a b c d e four cases are there. C is the case where you do not have is basically it is rock outcropping motion bedrock outcropping motion. At the C you do not have any soil column on the top of it. So, whatever the motion coming at the point C will be your let us you can say it is a control motion or it is the motion which is given by the uh, seismologist. 
and when you have at C, then next when you have this uh, uh, the, at this motion, if I put a soil column on the top of it, which is the case in case of uh, figure C, what happens because there is no foundation, there is no structure, no building. So, the motion input motion will convert into what we call the free field response or free field motion. So, the wave will start input will be given at point C and then the waves after traveling they will reach at point D and E. So, the amplitude of the motion which is denoted here in the case size of the arrow which you could see. So, once like this was your input which is given here. First of all, due to the presence of the soil column, even at the point C, the motion will change, which is normally less than whatever you have at the point C, due to the presence of the effect of. Then point D and E, it will get amplified. So, the size of the arrow you see that at point D and E are different than your size of the arrow uh, at the base, which is at point C. So, this is the what we call the free field response or free field motion that is the second case. Now, what I do in the D, case D, we put structure on the location where the foundation is supposed to come that is the dotted line shown here, but we do not consider the mass of the structure or inertial force only stiffness is considered elastic properties. So, again when the structure is present then the motion at the same points which you recorded at D and E earlier will further change and for the same input motion now you get in the output both translation and rotation. Translation component keep will keep varying over the height of the structure it is not constant it is here and here and at the base of the structure that is the point O you get a rocking component. So, your input was only translation, but your output is translation as well as rotation you get. So, this was the case. Now, in the last case uh, this is called inertia uh, this is called kinematic interaction. So, the case D where you are not considering the mass of the structure, but you are considering the stiffness properties will be treated as a kinematic interaction. Now, in the case of E where you have put considering the mass of the structure also in, in addition to what we have considered the elastic properties. In that case, further the motion at the same points which have you rec uh, have been recorded earlier will change and that is the called the effect of inertial interaction. So, as a result whatever we have discussed some of them already writ also written in the slides. So, I think I uh, uh, will I'll skip this one here. Yeah. So, this is about effects. So, like uh, uh, let me explain this Yeah. So, th these are the effects which we have discussed. So, effect of SSI can be discussed control motion plus effect of SSI, then you get modified free field motion. When you mean modified free field motion uh, on the top of it, you have effect of base, then what is you called kinematic interaction. And if you add, add the mass of the structure, then you get inertial interaction. So, this is about that how we go from control motion to uh, the free field motion, then free field motion to kinematic interaction Ki and Ki to inertial interaction. So, uh, continue with this uh, now let us talk about the what is the effect how this uh, the soil which was present in this case in the uh, the second case how it influence your results how it influence the response. So, each frequency component of the motion is affected differently. So, because uh, basically as you see during the ground response analysis that the amplifying factor they depends very much on frequency of excitation. And in real earthquake you have a, a consist of a number of frequencies as a result uh, the response which you get will be different for the each frequency component. For example, in a, an acceleration time stream which is quite different from the control motion. This amplification of the seismic motion uh, which is we are discussing in GRA so that uh, th that is uh, uh, indicates the structures which are founded on a deep soil uh, soft soil side have been damaged more severely in actual earthquakes that have neighboring structure founded on rock. So, when the earthquake comes it has been seen during the damage scenarios. 
those buildings those structures which are founded on rock rocky site damage is not so much but those founded on deep uh, like you now uh, soft soil sites the damage was more so that shows that the effect of amplification so this was the first was the effect of gra so the effect of ground response analysis that is the effect of soil the second the presence of the soil in the uh, dynamic model will make the system more flexible and if your system is more flexible then there will be change there will be a uh, uh, decrease in the fundamental frequency and after decreasing in a fundamental frequency which may be significant below above the applicable for the fixed base structure so first effect is amplification the first effect will try to increase the response of the system because due to amplification effect in the second case omega n due to the presence of soil omega n is expected to decrease because when you consider the soil inside the system the value of k will decrease which is which was with the rock so in case of rock k will be higher in case of soil k will be low and mass will be more or less same so what here because k decreases as a result natural frequency omega n will decrease and once omega n decrease then it may go away from the frequency of excitation so as a result your response may decrease so most of the many times it has been observed when you considered like uh, uh, compared to fixed base structure when you consider ssi the response may decrease due to this effect so the first effect ground response analysis may increase this this effect may decrease the response the imp implication of this reduction will depend on the frequency content of the seismic input motion because this also will depends also uh, like uh, uh, because how far omega n is whether after change in the frequency where your natural frequency is going close to the frequency of excitation or it is going away if it is getting close to excitation you will get amplification if you are going away then it will reduce the amplification uh, in certain cases the fundamental frequency will be moved below the range of uh, so this is we already uh, like uh, uh, will be moved below the range of high seismic excitation resulting in a significantly smaller seismic input felt by the structure now the third effect the which is related to damping the radiation of energy of the propagating waves away from the structure will result in an increase of the damping of the final dynamic system when you consider the in the soil in the uh, system instead of rock because the damping metal damping of the soil is greater than that of rock so as a result because the damping in the system have increased so this may help you to reduce the response of the system uh, so for a uh, soil site which approach elastic half space this increase will be significant leading to a strongly reduced response so so here you have uh, uh, suppose if you have the metal damping only then you in that case you may not get any beneficial effect on the seismic response to be expected so you have three factors here now one is the amplification due to ground response analysis second is the change in the natural frequency and third is the factor which is coming the effect of damping so as a result we have this uh, like uh, the effect of ssi will be due to all these three factors which we will discuss uh, there but before that it has been observed that the ssi increases when you have the more flexible the soil and the st st stiffer the structure so the issue basically the effect of ssi will be large when there is a difference in the stiffness of the structure and your soil so if this difference is large then effect of ssi is more if difference is less the effect of ssi will be less so here if you have very stiff structure which is on very flexible soil the effect of ssi will increase other if you have very flexible structure which is uh, sitting on a rock then effect of ssi will be negligible so the effect will be negligible for a flexible structure founded on a firm soil so this we already discussed that different components 
Now oral effects, we have uh, discussed three effects of SSI and these three effects are some of them are contrary to each other. So, there are opposing effects that is in general uh, because until you have the data what is for the data for example, what data is required for solution interaction analysis. You require the properties the stiffness and uh, uh, like mass of the structure then same stiffness and mass of the soil and then you uh, calculate what we say the natural frequency of the system. And the next is your uh, frequency of excitation your input motion. So, all these input motion material properties geometrical properties are available then only you can carry out the analysis and you may say whether due to consideration of SSI the response will increase or decrease because there are three factors and out of these three factors one ground response analysis is due to ground response analysis the response is expected to increase, but other factors may increase or decrease your response. So, but if we neglect the first one that is the effect of uh, uh, amplification then normally uh, the response which you get considering the solution interaction is the less compared to when you do not consider. So, as a result it is called the what we call the beneficial effect of SSI. So, this uh, economic consideration. Uh, so, let us see that what is the beneficial effect of SSI. So, for the approximate interaction analysis the control motion is directly used as input motion in the final dynamic system. And the fixed base analysis leads to larger values of the global response as for example, the total overturning moment and the total transfer shear and thus to be on a conservative design. So, that is there. Now, economic considerations normally dictate that when designing structures the reduction in seismic force which result from considering the approximate soil analysis be used. So, like uh, we, we, we use uh, approximate SSI uh, for this uh, uh, from the economic consideration because like uh, carrying out uh, like uh, exact uh, solution interaction analysis may require little more complication and more involving it is rigorous. There are some exceptional cases where the simplified interaction effects will govern the design. Uh, this approximate method of calculating the interaction that neglects the free field site analysis and the geometric averaging effect is inconsistent that that may not be the exact one. For example, for special structures for example, nuclear power plants SSI is always analyze considering all effects for uh, all effects means including ground response analysis then the effect of uh, uh, effect of on the natural frequency and the third one is the effect of the damping. Taking the flexibility of underlying soil into account when calculating the seismic response. So, it complicated the analysis considerably and the uh, in general the presence of soil makes the system flexible and thus decreasing natural frequency or increasing natural period. So, normally as we said when we consider the soil which is flexible compared to structure then the natural frequency of the system decreases and it will increase the natural period. Normally acceleration for the structures which are founded on soft soil is smaller than that for the structures which are founded on rock. So, this slide says what are the beneficial effects of SSI solution interaction. So, what you have here you have type first, type second, type third three types of uh, uh, soil spectral acceleration coefficient. So, the type first is rock or hard soil, type second is medium soil and type third is soft soil. So, this is response spectrum which is given IS 1893. Uh, of course, it is a little bit change it is in IS 1893 uh, to uh, like uh, in 2002 version in 2016 it is little bit. So, what you have here in this case uh, like uh, when you you increase the as we said the natural frequency may decrease when you consider the soil inside the system as a result period which is 1 over f and f is nothing but omega over 2 pi. So, 2 pi 
और ओमेगा एन सो वेन यू हैव दिस टाइम द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी डिक्रीजेस योर पीरियड विल इंक्रीज एंड वेन योर टाइम पीरियड दिस इंक्रीजेस सो यू विल मूव मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम फ्रॉम दिस प्लेट्यू विच इज टू पॉइंट फाइव यू मूव इन दिस साइड सो एज ए रिजल्ट यू आर द स्पेक्ट्रल एक्सेलरेशन कोफिशेंट वैल्यू ऑफ एस ए बाई जी डिक्रीजेज सो बिकॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ एस ए बाई जी इज डिक्रीजिंग सो इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट इन द डिजाइन यू रिक्वायर देर विल बी लेस डिमांड ऑफ फोर्सेज सो द डिजाइन इज गोइंग टू बी इकोनॉमिकल सो बेसिकली इफेक्ट ऑफ एस एस आई इन दिस केस इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी बेनिफिशियल एंड इट इज बेनिफिशियल इन द सेंस इट विल हेल्प टू रिड्यूस योर रेस्पॉन्स सो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वी ऑब्जर्व दिस इज द इफेक्ट बट इट इज नॉट ऑलवेज अगेन इन जनरल एस एस आई लीड टू स्मॉलर एक्सेलरेशन एंड स्ट्रेसेज एंड देर बाई स्मॉलर फोर्सेज इन द स्ट्रक्चर सो एज अ रिजल्ट योर डिजाइन इज गोइंग टू बी इकोनॉमिकल सो वट एवर यू आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन एनालिसिस ऑफ कंसिडरिंग सोल्यूशन ट्रक्शन then you can save that uh, money when or uh, like you know the uh, investment for the in the design however there are numerous document case studies where the perceived beneficial effect of ssi have led over simplification in the design leading to unsafe design in foundations and superstructures so one of the authors like melanokis and gazetas have in 2000 uh, you know, one paper published in, uh, so in this case they the authors have said that one one need to do it is not always the case that there will be the effect of ssi will be beneficial rather than it may be contrary or you may have other effect now what are the major issues for when we carried out solution interaction analysis they are listed here the first and foremost which is primary issue which we already discuss in solution interaction is the molding of unbounded domain to satisfy the radiation condition so this is the first important issue whether you are considering the other factors or not but this need to be must need to be considered uh now we need to do the modeling of soil in such a way that uh that constitutive model of the soil should be that it captures its frequency dependent characteristics the properties of the soil for the dynamic load they are not constant rather than uh, dynamic stiffness or impedance functions they are func uh, functions of frequency so when the frequency changes dynamic stiffness will change so that is the second point here in the modeling of soil once you have model for the linear case another issue comes modeling of nonlinearity of soil and which is nothing but strain dependent properties strain dependent characteristics that the property of the soil is changing they are different at different strain and how they change with the different strain we have already seen during Uh, the last uh, module which is on dynamic soil properties if your soil conditions are saturated and loose then there could be liquefaction and we one need to carry out the modeling for soil liquefaction also uh though you have so many uh, problems here but still uh what we do we consider uh, for the simplicity the simple models which is the linear models elastic model in that case the point number 3 and 4 will not be fulfilled that means we are doing only the modeling for the linear case where unbounded domain is modeled and soil uh, frequency dependence characteristics is captured so in ssi soil is mostly assumed as a linear though nonlinear analysis is also possible which we said total solutions sum of the response of the free field and the interaction part therefore nonlinearity cannot be considered until direct methods are used so here what do you do you find the total response in two steps first is free field and the interaction part as a result because you are doing the sum of or uh, while to find the total response you you need to have the sum of two components so you already assume some non linear uh, linearity in the system and once you are carrying out the superposition then linear analysis possible and so what we have components interaction effects are in two part one is ki is kinematic interaction and ii is inertial interaction both of these things we have already discussed and free field motion is represented by ground response analysis 
or in short what we call the GRA. Now the, there are different methods of analysis for solution attraction and there are different approaches. So approaches which are used to solve SOI can be classified. First is continuous models which are based on theory of elasticity. Second is discrete models based on the lumped masses and third is finite element techniques. So in this case uh, there are three methods continuous and then discrete and the finite element. Each one have its advantage and limitations. In case of discrete method uh, like uh, you have uh, in the case of continuous model you have in continuous model which is based on theory of elasticity you have can consider the damping of the system but nullity is not possible to consider. In the second case discrete model with lumped masses you can consider the nullity but it is difficult to deal with the uh, material nullity as well as uh, it is uh, like uh, uh, inertial effects are difficult to consider. The third case finite element techniques it, it overcome the limitation of the first and second but it comes at the cost of uh, higher computation. So I think I will stop it here and we will discuss these two slides in the next lecture. Thank you very much.